So what is consideration for a contract? Generally, it is something of value that is exchanged between the parties. That is, it's a bargain for exchange of value. So let me give you an example. I promise to pay you money if you promise to uh, wash my car. Okay, you are providing value to me in the form of services to wash my car. That is consideration. I am providing money to you. Again, that is some form of value and that's consideration. A promise that isn't supported by consideration is merely a gift or it's an unsupported uh, promise. And in that case, it won't be enforceable. So if I simply say, I promise to give you a hundred dollars. Now, generally that is not an enforceable contract because I have no exchange of value coming back from you. Now, there's a couple of important things to remember about consideration. Yes, it is in a bargain for exchange of value, but there are a couple of rules there in addition to that. That is, um, consideration doesn't have to be something traditionally thought of as value. It can merely be that you have a right to do something and you forego doing that. So if I say I'll pay you $100 not to mow, to mow your grass today because I don't want to hear the noise. Okay, now you have a right to mow your own yard and you foregoing that right is a form of consideration because you've foregone a right. You can think about it in the business context in the form of a non-compete clause, for example. I will pay you part of your salary is contingent upon if you ever leave my firm or my practice that you will not compete with me in a given area. Okay, here's another rule. Prior consideration is not sufficient, generally. That means, say we have an agreement. I promise to sell you this and you promise to uh, give me something of value, money or property in exchange for what I'm going to sell you. That's an enforceable contract. But say later I come back and say, that's not enough. I want more money uh, in exchange for me selling you this. Well, in order for that agreement to be binding, that is, that you are going to pay me more money than we originally agreed in our original contract, I must provide some additional form of consideration. That is, I have to throw in something extra. If I don't, your promise to pay an additional value is not enforceable. Now, there are exceptions to that rule. Uh, when you have merchants dealing in goods, okay, and they're selling a good of $500 or more, if the person they are dealing with agrees to pay an additional $500 or more for that item, that is, they say, okay, well, I'm selling you this for $500. The merchant comes back and says, well, I can't sell it to you for that. I need to sell it to you for more. And you actually agree to that. And you agree that I will pay you an additional $500 or more. In that case, it may be enforceable. Uh, that is simply because in the business context, the market rate of things changes frequently, so that is a, a notable exception. Uh, another exception is something for merchants, again, under the Uniform Commercial Code, which says if a merchant makes an offer to you and puts it in writing and says that offer will not be revoked for this period of time. Now that's a promise and it's value going one way, but there's no consideration coming back from the person receiving that offer. Um, so in that case, um, the UCC makes an exception and says this is called a firm offer by a merchant. And in that case, it will be enforceable um, without consideration. So in general, those, those uh, are the rules behind it. In every context, there may be exceptions to this rule. In some cases, an offer an option contract uh, may be enforceable without a determined amount of consideration, for example, and an option being the option that I give you to purchase something at a given price in the future. But by and large, understand um, acceptance and consideration as that, that 